Five overtimes, 31 laps past the scheduled race distance, and all of that for a Joey Logano win. Welcome back to Break Hard. I'm Matt. Yes, NASCAR in Nashville. They're not ready for us like a group of white girls from Lexington suburbs that are going to Nashville for the first time. Trust me, they're more than ready for you. At the start of the race, Denny Hamlin sails it off into turn one on the first lap, gets loose like a bachelorette on Broadway after three drinks get in her, and moves up the racetrack. Takes the lead, but Jeff Burton called it an aggressive move. It wasn't aggressive. He just was trying to not wreck at that point. Denny Hamlin also did a pre-race Morgan Wallen walkout of his motor coach, which was both cringy and and after Justin Haley held him up so much that he gave the lead to Christopher Bell, Justin Haley might want to avoid a rooftop bar with Denny Hamlin today. Michael McDowell was trying to, you know, get a Music City miracle out of this and stretch his fuel all the way through stage one. He stretched it further than Kristen Cavallari stretched her fame at this point. It ultimately did not work out for him. And Christopher Bell went on to win stage number one. He now tied himself at that point with Kyle Larson for the most playoff points of the season. For races this weekend and, and stage number two, specifically, NBC has somebody embedded with certain teams. And I honestly think it brings a ton to the broadcast. It's something Fox doesn't do, but NBC has found a nice thing to do where it brings a lot more information to the fans, and I really like that. John Hunter Nemechek brought out the first natural caution of the day when he spun off a turn four, and unlike his dad in 2009, he did not flip over. Ty Gibbs also brought out a caution a little while after that, where he bodied the 48 car off of turn four, and he ends up spinning. But in, unlike Max Verstappen, he did not blame the person that didn't cause it. He instead just kept continuing on. And then that's when the rains came. And unlike whatever Zach Bryan's older brother Luke says, rain is not a good thing, especially not on Sunday. So we sat around for this rain to finish up. And then when we got back going and during the red flag, the two car of Austin Cendric was penalized for something that I've never heard somebody get penalized for. They had a fan sitting too close to the car. They had a fan sitting on the pit box that they were trying to dry the pit box with. And NASCAR said it was too close to the car and they thought that the team was attempting to try to cool the car down. So Austin Cendric got sent to the back of the line in a very bizarre move. They weren't even working on the car just thought that they might be trying to illegally cool it down a little bit later on into stage two ryan priest bodied bubba wallace like he wanted his best eric almarola impression good thing they're not in the same comp meeting uh, on monday or tuesday in the trd camp because that could end up badly for well probably bubba because ryan seems like a real scrapper especially being a modified guy from the northeast chris rebel goes on to win stage number two as well denny hamlin was upset that kyle larson nipped him at the line the two of them got into a bit of a shoving match back and forth and chris gabehart came over the radio and was telling him to stop playing grab ass and he got more spicy on the radio than hattie b is, and it was aggressive by Chris Gabehart. You typically don't see that, but he's trying to keep his driver cool and put him in position to win the race later on in the day, which just took a really long time to get there. Riley Hurst brought out the caution in stage number three after contact with Corey LaJoy, who still does not have a top 10 on a non-drafting track. He's in perfect position on Sunday to get it done and just failed to get it done. Then you had Eric Jones getting off into the wall and the Legacy Motor Club cars just had an absolutely abysmal day in Nashville. Jimmy Johnson's team is going the exact opposite direction of the other driver-owned teams out there. And honestly, I'm just not sure what they need to do to right the ship at this point. Chase Elliott then goes spinning off of turn four and protest. Hooters left and he's upset about it, so he spun himself out. Not really, but it works out well. RIP to the Hooters sponsorship. Chris Rebell then got into the wall and ruined his day. He absolutely smacked the wall, broke the toe link, and just essentially ruined the suspension on the car. The best car of the day out of the race, uh, and that kind of opened the field up a little bit. He was back in traffic, and he even said uh, when he got out of the infield care center that he just got too aggressive with it, and it was a dumb mistake on his part. After that... Austin Dillon sent Brad Keselowski to Smashville and tying in more Nashville references here. And while that all is happening down the backstretch under caution, Carson Hosevar has a relapse and he hooks uh, Harrison Burton in the right rear and spins him out under caution. And now, honestly, it should have been a penalty in the moment. It should be a penalty on Tuesday when the penalty report comes out. You can't keep letting Carson Hosevar hook people in the right rear. I don't care if it's under caution or not. He still turned him on a hot racetrack, technically. Uh, and it's just a bad look overall. He throws his hissy fits down in the truck series he only i think only ever got a two lap you know penalty for aggressive driving or reckless driving or whatever they want to refer to it as now he's doing the same things up here in the cup series and that just cannot be accepted Ryan Blaney's team made one of the dumber strategy calls I think we've seen in quite some time since like John Hunter Nemechek's Nimco Truck Series team was like, yeah, dude, you can make it on fuel. And he ran out with 16 laps to go. And they're all looking at calculators like, oh, yeah. We didn't type that in correctly because Blaney's strategy just was never going to work. And spoiler alert, it didn't work. He didn't manage to get up to sixth place, but that's because K 
chaos happened happened afterwards. After that, we had a great battle between Ross Chastain, who stayed out on two tires, and Denny Hamlin. Denny Hamlin catches him, and the two of them dueled back and forth. And honestly, it looked like Chastain might have had a chance to get back to him as they were coming to essentially take the white flag. And that is when Austin Sendrick decided it was time to explore the infield. Last week, he wanted to explore the wilderness. This week, he explored the infield. And that's when everything devolved into absolute chaos. On the next restart, Kyle Larson tried to get his retaliation, his revenge on Denny Hamlin. And he was shoving the 11 into the corner, really wanted to move him up the racetrack. Instead, he lost the nose of the five car. He moves up, just absolutely wipes out Ross Chastain. That Bush Light Freedom car, yeah, I'm pretty sure as hard as Ross hit, he could probably taste the freedom in that Bush beer because he absolutely got waylaid. And I mean, you can say that Larson owed him after Darlington last year, sure, but that was just a bad wreck for him. Kyle Busch gets caught up in it in NASCAR takes him from the back of the running order and puts him all the way back into fourth on the next restart. And man, Jeff Burton was not happy about that. When they came to do the restart, Jeff Burton said, that's ridiculous. And you would never get that from Fox. I can guarantee you that. On the next restart, we had, uh, this was the second attempt at overtime. Justin Haley turns Corey Heim in the backstretch and all chaos ensues. Austin Dillon gets collected in it. Uh, I believe maybe John Hunter, or yeah, John Hunter Nemechek gets caught up in it. Just kind of a whole lot of people get caught up in that wreck. So then we restart again. And now keep in mind, everybody is really low on fuel. Not like cannot make it any further. So on the next restart, Kyle Larson lines up on the front row. He goes to hammer the gas. No gas. There's just absolutely no fuel in the car. He gets stacked up. He doesn't even get turned. Kyle Busch gets turned by the nine car of Chase Elliott. He wrecks and getting all the way back to fourth to try to salvage his day and get him a top five. And that team desperately needs a good run is all for naught because he gets wrecked on the front stretch. He's absolutely burning it down like he's Ricky Stenhouse Jr. after his wreck of the Daytona Summer Race last year. I'm not sure if anybody remembers that, but he was revving the piss out of that car. Kyle Busch was doing the same thing, trying to get moving. Couldn't get it done. The fans were cheering for him. They were so happy that he got knocked out of the race. People were flipping him off in the grandstand. I just don't understand that at all. But Kyle Busch's day, done. His bad leak, bad luck streak continues. The bad leak streak? No, bad luck streak continues. In my notes, I wrote another goddamn overtime. Yes, another overtime. Another overtime where it all sets up for a freaking Joey Logano victory. So how did we get there? Well, the uh, the leading cars, that being Denny Hamlin, Martin Trex Jr., they decide to come to pit road. They're like, we have no chance of making it on fuel. Instead of causing another gigantic wreck, ruining our day, we'll come in and pit. So they do that. They pit. There's another restart. Denny makes it all the way up to, uh, I believe, 13th before the end of uh, that restart You know, goes to crap and they have to re-rack them once again josh barry got wrecked on that restart that's one the one that happened there and that absolutely needed to be a caution some people said that it didn't no he hit the wall very hard they got to go out there and make sure that he's all right you can't just have a car sitting on a hot racetrack like that that's stupid so then we have another restart and it looks like mm, uh, there's a chance that chase briscoe could win maybe bubba wallace is going to steal one maybe joey logano is going to hold on for victory zane smith is sitting right there in third and you're like is zane smith about to steal a race win right here that would absolutely throw a huge wrench into the playoffs and on the restart tyler reddick gets shot out of a cannon that guy is absolutely flying like a dude that's just pounded two monster energy drinks on his way to a drywalling job just hopped up and he's flying up there and he gets to him but he just can't get around him. And then Zane nips him at the finish line, and we waited around for an extra 31 laps, five overtimes for a Joey Logano victory. And he had the same amount of fuel as Denny Hamlin did before he pitted and a few others. So, yeah, that was perplexing that he was able to stretch it, but he went all Scott Dixon and got the most fuel mileage he could out of it, which is impressive for him. So shout out to Logano for getting that done. He then has enough to do a burnout as well. Zane Smith nips uh, Tyler Reddick at the line. He gets his first ever top five in the Cup Series. First top 10 on a non-drafting track. Corey LaJoy's teammates never done that. And now maybe Zane can get some of the haters off of his back who are like, Zane Smith stinks this and that, even though we're just going to completely ignore that it's a first year Spire Motorsports third team, something that they haven't done before. So yeah, I think it's okay that Zane has struggled up to this point. And a second place certainly helps make everybody feel better over there at that team. Listen, five overtimes, an extra 31 laps after the scheduled race distance. That's that's just too much. I said on Twitter that you got to do something about this overtime. You got to get rid of overtime. You got to limit the number of overtimes. I think you have to limit the number of overtimes, maybe limit the number of attempts to three. That used to be a rule back in the day. Certainly don't have the overtime line. That's stupid. Don't ever have that. But in terms of limiting the number of attempts, I think that should probably be a rule out there because at some point you just start to look 
ridiculous out here. It looks like amateur hour. And honestly, the sport doesn't need... Uh, it doesn't need to look like a joke at times. It's ridiculous to just keep re-racking them, keep redoing it, redoing it, do it again. No, because we know what the outcome is going to be here. Sure, every once in a while, having one of these weird chaotic races is fine. 2017 Brickyard 400, I get it. Yeah, that was an entertaining race. This just kept going on and on and on. And then we just get a Joey Logano victory out of it. And you're like, what? we waited around through all that chaos for that? For that? Zane winning, okay, I mean, at least if you're going to have a chaotic race, throw a chaotic winner into the mix. Joey Logano's not a chaotic winner. Yeah, he hasn't looked very good all year, but he now has locked himself into the playoffs, so good for him. But, yeah, I just don't think that the winner fit a chaotic race. Either way, let me know in the comments what you think about this. And to really cap off just how chaotic this race was, Daniel Hemrick got a top 10 in that 31 call car. Daniel Hemrick did. So that's how you know this race was absolutely drunk there at the end, which is fitting, right? It's Nashville. It's Broadway. There's always going to be somebody out there that's a little bit too wasted. In this instance, it was the race. So let me know in the comments what you thought about the race. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram and Twitter at BreakHardBlog.